it has been a good while since we have uploaded a video on this channel so why not do it today so i have got quite a bit of slings over here that we will be you see these enclosures are small we'll be rehousing into these bigger ones because they're kind of outgrowing these smaller enclosures so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be rehousing them into here so we've got two four six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so bear with us this is going to be a rather long video don't mind the cars in the background because the door is open letting fresh air come in because it's after rain so yeah you see one of the enclosure over here and you can see there are some maggots inside because the gnats have come to eat the pre-killed superworm but the tea is doing fine but we are going to be rehousing as well i've got some damp cocoa fiber over here which we will be putting in the jelly cup giving them some fresh substrate okay let's do this it's gonna be this video is just gonna be all in one take so anything that you see the good the bad the ugly in this video i will not cut so you're going to witness everything okay so yeah this is basically how i do my slings these containers i have poked like holes on the sides so yeah let us start the rehousing shall we okay how am i gonna position my tripod though bear with me like i said this is going to be one single take so yeah anything you will see i gotta position my tripod i mean this channel if you guys remember if you guys have been watching it's all about raw footage so everything that you see is going to be pretty raw okay Get the covers all right put the covers here put this let's get this little guy into his fresher enclosure can you guys even see or oh, okay there you go there you go nice so that's a bigger rather bigger enclosure for it it should be happier in here more places to burrow and all okay so that is a Grimastola Action I'll put it aside here so all these substrate I'll just dump it into the bin because we don't need all the old substrate okay moving on to the next one let me get some substrate in the container cocoa fiber damp one because slings i've had slings um what you call that i've had slings die off because the substrate is too dry even the arid species oh my gosh why was this stuck together look at that water but yeah um even the arid species they will need their substrate somewhat damp not to say super damp but damp oh man this one's kicking hairs come on let's go this is a um what you call this uh pamphobetius platyoma let's go into a new enclosure I'm not too worried of them as slings so i'll just use my finger although it's not recommended okay so these enclosures i come on go down go down these enclosures i put the holes at the side and none on the lid because i do not want the uh, moisture from the substrate to evaporate too quickly so, yeah, just um, on the side, that way it'll, how can I say, it'll not evaporate too quickly because, you know, water evaporates upwards. And from the side, it takes somewhat longer. My hand is already starting to itch, but it's okay. 
I'm not too worried. Oh, I should have rehoused them before feeding because <laughs> I, I just fed this one as you can see. But yeah, anyways, um, will you bring your food into the new enclosure with you? I think you will. Look at this. Maybe he will bring his food with him. Come on. Let's go. Or either that, or I grab the food, and he's stuck to the food. Anyways, let's go. There you go. Yep, he's still got his food. I think he really loves his food. <laughs> Alright, so that is uh, Bromstolaction. Oh, he let go of the food. He'll get it later. Not to worry. I just fed them like um, five minutes before doing this rehouse because I didn't think I wanted to do the rehouse today. But then I was like, after feeding them, I was like, hmm, why not just do it? Which was kind of a bad move. So yeah. All right. Maybe I should put this more to the pointing downward, something like that. Hopefully you guys can see better. Can you? I don't know. Anyways, moving on. This is a, another Bramastola Action. Come on, let's go. It is time to go to your new enclosure. All right, there you go. Go. Okay. And then, of course, the superworm. I'll just leave it. Oh, my gosh. No, no, no. You're not going this way. You are going back into the enclosure. There you go. Whoop. Chill, dude. Chill the freak out, buddy. Okay. Gramostola Action. Whew. All right. Moving on. And it's also, although I don't recommend it, actually don't even listen to me and don't even follow what I'm doing. Don't even use your hands on tarantulas because you can get bit and you can potentially harm the tea. So yeah. Hey buddy. Do you want a new enclosure? I'm being very gentle with them, just scooping them from the bottom. Man, for Gramostolas, these guys are fast. Just drop that in. The superworm. Yeah, these guys are fast, man. See how it moves? Like crazy. People say Gramostolas are like really good beginner species because they're slow and all. Man, I beg to differ. Okay, I'm getting more substrate. See, the thing is, I got this these containers like weeks ago, probably over a month ago, and I just procrastinating, procrastinated, like rehousing them, which is not good. That's one thing that I don't like about myself. I am an, I'm a really bad procrastinator. Bad procrastinator? Good procrastinator? How do you say it? Well, I'm bad at starting things early, but I am a very good procrastinator. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, nice. Hopefully, they will do well in these new enclosures. I'm sure they will. But yeah, these new deli cups will definitely last them a way way longer because these they're starting to outgrow this is another what you call this um pamphobetes platyoma i love their colors when they are adults they are like purple so cool In you go. Watch your leg. Okay. Should I put in the superworm? It's all pre-killed superworms, by the way. I feed my juveniles pre-killed superworms. I feed my slings pre-killed mealworms. Because I'm afraid that the worms can harm, attack the tarantula. It does happen, so you're going to have to 
be very careful with that. If the superworm or mealworm does not harm the tarantula, when it grows up and turns into a beetle, it will. Because especially superworm beetles, they are so aggressive. Hmm. Bumba cabocla, Brazilian redhead. But yeah, they are so aggressive that you don't even want to mess with them. They even bite, bite us. Yes, it's crazy. Come on, buddy. Let's go. There you go. You go. Enjoy your new home. A little Bumba. These guys are starting to become pretty rare in the hobby. There used to be quite a bit of them for sale, but nowadays I, I can barely even find them. And people don't even really keep them anymore from what I see. I got to know the species Bumba from, um, there was this YouTuber that I used to watch, you know, John3800. Yeah, John3800, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's his YouTube channel. He had some Boomba Caboclas, and I thought they were really cool. Because, you know, the other tarantula... Whoa, this guy. Because, you know, the other tarantula species, we have, like, um, what do you call that? The Gramostola, Ophonopelma. There's a lot of species in the genus. If I'm not mistaken, Boomba has only one. Or maybe two. I'm not sure. But I know in the hobby that the common one is this. Bumba Cabocla. Or I think it's Bumba Horrida now. I'm not sure. Or was it Bumba Horrida before? Comment down below. I'm not too sure. Kind of forgot. But nonetheless, I don't really care about their names. They're super cool looking. That's what matters. Look at that. So I actually bought 10, 10 of these. So over here, you're probably gonna see eight, right? Eight or six. The others, I've rehoused them into other enclosures. So yeah, they are not an aggressive species, which is why they're awesome. They make great beginner pets as well. The only downside is that they are not as common as many other species, so. Gonna bear that in mind. Okay. Let's see. They get about five and a half inches. I have an adult female. I'm just hoping one of these. Yep. Rarely you hear me this say this. Rarely you hear me say this. Sorry, I can't speak. But I'm actually hoping that one, well, just one of these. Bumbas becomes a mature male because I think Bumba Kabokas in the clutch mostly are females. I'm not too sure because I once bought a batch of Bumba Kabokas and majority of them were females, believe it or not. I gave a lot of them away to my friend. But yeah. Okay. We are at Two more if I'm, yeah, two more over here. Let's see, they're all doing fine. So the Boomba Kobokla, one thing good about them is I've read that they don't mind dry or damp-ish substrate. Because they're from Brazil, right? So some species, they're very sensitive to dryness and some sensitive to moisture like the GBB. So you want to keep GBBs dry, but these Boombas, they don't really mind dry or damp. I've kept, I've kept mine on both, dry and damp, just to experiment, and they don't seem to mind. So I think the safest bet for these guys is semi-damp, so they won't dehydrate. This one's really chunky, so they won't dehydrate, and they will still not die because it's damp and they don't mind it. Yeah, love this species. They're so cool. Alright, so we have put um, 
all these guys into their new deli cups. I'm not sure if I should do like this one's I think it's doing fine in here, so I'll leave it in here. But this one as well. Just gonna have to dampen the substrate a little bit. I think one is a male. This is the Dominican Republic. Um the purple. Purple Dominican Republic. Okay, so we've got some mealworms here. This is what I feed the tiny slings. And uh yeah guys, I guess that's basically it. Hmm. This is my Afonopelma by Coloratum. It's doing fine as well. We'll give him a super worm. Not sure if she will eat. Let's see if she'll eat. Okay. I'm going to let's see. This will be a bonus video, like a bonus feeding clip. Because I'm not sure if she will actually eat. She often just fast and not eat. Okay, let's see. I've got a super worm here. She has very good hearing. Let's see if she will eat. Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful. We shall give her a little bit of damp substrate on the side, just in case she want some chill girl yeah because it's kind of lacking substrate in this enclosure she kind she kinds of um pushes the substrate aside and all and the substrate's all dried so i'll just give her doesn't look nice but i don't care because this is not my display display enclosure give her some damp substrate although they do like it dry but i've also noticed that these guys don't mind it slightly damp so it's good as well she does not dehydrate she does not have a water dish because she was small when i put her in here so yeah kind of like a sling i just usually damped one side of the enclosure but now she's bigger i may just put a water dish in for her but yeah guys um i guess that will be it for today's rehousing. We do have some arboreals over here, the Stromatopelma calciatum and some of Poets pulker. We've got five calciatums and five pulkers in there. But yeah, basically today I just wanted to do these guys, rehouse them into these bigger enclosures. And yeah, I guess that is it. I'll see you guys in the next video, I guess. I will probably start posting on this channel again and yeah i mean this video is already like 18 minutes maybe in the another video we will rehouse these guys these are the lesiodora parahybana i think they're outgrowing these enclosures already we have got quite a few of them i think 12 yeah i think around there we'll rehouse them into these but as for now those i think it'll be it's good enough for this video it's really like 18 plus minutes so yeah i'll see you guys in the next video this one just molted nice i'll see you guys in the next video take care stay safe and have an awesome one